My name is Charmaine Cloud and I am a bikini competitor. I'm also a prep coach and a lifestyle coach with uh, Dimas Guida Nutrition. Let's take it back to how I grew up. So I'm, I'm Greek and I come from a Greek family, but I was born in Europe and typically like, you know, the Mediterranean diet is recommended like the best diet, right? And so I grew up on those things already. So when it came to like my values and being able to make good choices as a kid, you know, I had my parents to do that for me pretty much. So, but, you know, we were also not the most well-off family. So at times, whenever we moved into the States, I remember, you know, it was a lot easier to go and get some of those less quality foods because they were cheaper and stuff too. So I kind of had that balance between healthy food, but also a lot of non-healthy food too. And so getting into college was really, you know, I was sent to the wolves and I had to make my own choices being an adult. And I went into super party lifestyle. I was definitely like thrown out there feeling like no one understands me. I'm going to go like crazy party. And that's when the weight gain started. And so that's where essentially like the, I stopped working out. I, I was working out through sports whenever I I was in high school, right? Um, so I was playing softball. I was cheerleading. I was dancing. My dad was also military. So we also just lived a, a more active lifestyle in general. And he pushed that a lot um, with us growing up is to always um, be healthier and to play the sports and all that. But when I got to college and I had to do my own thing, it was quite definitely the opposite for me. And so that's when it wasn't freshman 15 for me. It was more like 20. <laughs> but um so with that, I, that's kind of when the cascade kind of started for me. Um, unfortunately, I also found myself in an abusive relationship at the time as well, too. And the habits that um, he had at the time were definitely aiding in the bad habits that I had as well. Coupled with, you know, depression, anxiety, I lost a lot of my own identity through that experience as well, too. And it kind of worked out, though, right? So. I found out I had a, I was having some definite like health symptoms. So I knew something was wrong. I didn't understand what it could lead to at the time, but I went and had that doctor's appointment and I was told that I was pre-diabetic. And for me, you know, growing up living in a way where I had control over my health and then now I was making these decisions and based upon these decisions, I was not making good choices. And this was what something that was leading into my potential for the rest of my life. You know, this is having diabetes is going to affect um, my kids one day. It's going to affect, um, you know, the rest of my life. And those were things that was flashing through my head. I remember during that appointment, just being so scared of what was next. And I, but all I knew was I needed to fix it. I needed to get out of this. And so, of course, I went and Dr. Google and was looking at, okay, what do I need to do to reverse these things? And naturally, they're, they're always going to tell you, well, you need to lose weight, eat better, um, not drinking, all of that. And so I knew that, but I didn't know how. Conveniently, that same week, um, so my mom, she's actually a competitor. Uh, she started competing before me. And she started competing in her early 40s. So around this time, I was watching my mom go through her little transformation. I wasn't living in the house anymore. I was out of the house. But, you know, I um, I watched from afar. I remember uh, every time I went to go visit my family, my mom looked drastically different every single time. I was like, what? And she was eating the chicken breast and not eating what we were eating. And, you know, um, but at the time, I was like, that's so weird. That's so weird. And um, so my mom asked me, she kind of knew that something was going on um, at home for me, but I wasn't in a place to really talk about, uh, the, you know, the abusive relationship I was in or talk about my health. But, you know, as a mother, you're watching your child and you just know something is wrong. Something is wrong. And obviously, like physically, I was definitely heading down a wrong path. So she asked me one day if I wanted to go to a bodybuilding show with her and to support one of her friends that was competing. And I needed to get out of the house. That was like another way out for me. So I said, yes. And I drove up to Dallas with her and I watched my first ever bodybuilding show. And before I actually stepped into the um, stage area, I met um, Angelica Teixeira, 
which Angelica Teixeira at the time was Miss Bikini Olympia. And um, I had no idea who she was. I had no idea what it, that title meant at all at the time because I had no no kind of education on bodybuilding. I just watched my mom eat weird things at weird times and watched her shrink as well, too. So I just remember the most impactful thing about talking with her besides seeing her glutes from a mile away um, was how humble she was. And I just got this like sense of comfort and um, she was so inspiring to me. I just remembered being like one completely enveloped in how beautiful she was and how incredible she looked. So that's immediately drawing, but her personality and how she talked to me as if I was the same as her. So someone who had nothing to do with bodybuilding, someone who was definitely clearly very overweight, um, someone who I also alluded a little bit to her about not being in a good place in my life. Didn't go into big detail, but you know, enough to kind of give her an idea of where I was at. And man, the, the words of advice that she gave me, she didn't know in so much later how um, impactful they were for me. And so I remember her telling me, I want to see you compete. I was like, shit i don't know if i can say that but i was like shit like me um mm, i just found out i'm pre-diabetic like um i really love bacardi <laughs> like what so uh but i went in and i watched the show and seeing everyone one of course they looked amazing incredible physiques right but watching them feel so empowered and we all know now right i know as a competitor what it takes to get up there now but I had no idea what it took to get up there. But all I knew was no one did that for them. And those were all choices that they made. No one did the ate the chicken breast. No one ate there did the cardio for them. You know, that was something that they solely did. And that feeling I have never felt in my life at that moment. Um, I felt like I was sitting in a tornado is the best way I can describe it is everything was moving so quickly around me that I didn't know what to do. I just felt stuck. So watching that after I remember I got home and that's when I decided I was like, I'm doing this. And at the time with the relationship I was in also like financially, I could not afford a coach. I was super lost on where I needed to go, what I needed to do, but I just started. I knew the basics. Like, okay, I know I need to make better choices. I needed, I know what healthy foods are for the most part. I knew I needed to stop drinking and I just needed to move my body. I needed to go work out. So I was the girl that sat in the parking lot for an hour sometimes trying to convince myself to walk in. And, but over time, kind of like when you start a new job at work, it's really awkward at first and you're a little nervous walking in, but over time you get more comfortable and then you start seeing familiar faces. And then it just starts becoming like a day in the life thing. Like, Oh, okay. Like rinse, repeat. And so that was me when I came to the gym, the hour in the parking lot turned to 30 minutes, or sometimes maybe if I had a bad day, maybe it was an hour, but I promised myself that I would walk in no matter how long it took in the parking lot. And whether I worked out for only 30 minutes or I worked out for two hours, uh, I was going to take it as a win. And I remember I would go and grab one little stack of dumbbells and I would go into this little ab room where no one ever ever went inside and I went on YouTube and I was like dumbbell only um workout for legs because I was too scared to go into other equipment that was so strange to me and foreign um and then you know over time seeing it enough I was like you know okay I've seen enough people do this um piece of equipment I'm gonna try it or I would look up a bunch of YouTube videos before because I was scared about what other people thought um but over time it got a lot better and then um I actually decided to try CrossFit for funsies. Are you a personal trainer, online fitness coach, or gym owner on the verge of burnout? Are you wanting to grow your fitness business but can't add more hours to your hectic schedule? Introducing Trainer Revenue Multiplier, the premier wealth creation system for fitness professionals that helps you earn more and work less. Visit www.trainerrevenuemultiplier.com today to schedule your free business accelerator session. If you're serious about taking your business to the next level, schedule your call today. And I wanted to find like new ways to meet people and just move my body. And I started 
going on Netflix and seeing all these little like documentaries for CrossFit pop up. And I was like, wow, these people are crazy. And um, I loved that. I was like another like rigid, like, oh, like tough girl thing, which I was craving that at the time, you know, I wanted to be strong because of the things that I had going on at home. And my first month I lost 30 pounds. So super crazy, very, very crazy. Um, but I did. And I started CrossFit and, and I was a two time a day or for a little while until I crashed. But um, I would do CrossFit in the morning. And then I, in the evening, I would, um, after I was done waitressing, I would go um, to the gym. And that was both of those just became a safe space. It was the only time that I got like away from my house as well as way away from my home life where I could think for myself. And when I started this, I didn't know that it would lead to me being able to find out so much more about myself on the inside and not just how cool and round shoulders can get, you know, um, it was more so finding out that strength is, in my opinion, I think like 95% mental. And I started proving myself that I could do the hard things. And that eventually led to me having the courage to be able to leave that relationship that I was in. And that was an extremely hard time in my life. But I always found solace and found my way into the gym and becoming more and more obsessed with the journey of um, what later was my first show. Um, and if it wasn't for that, you know, to be honest, I don't, I'm not, it sounds very intense, but I'm not sure if I would be alive right now. I'm not sure if I would actually be here. And that's like uh, something I hold very dear to my heart. And being able to tell my story now, back then, I definitely wasn't in a place to talk about um, what I was actually going through. I remember feeling like very embarrassed, um, almost like damaged and scared. Um, felt like no one really went through the same things that I was, you know, like abusive relationships. What? That's something you see like a movie about. Um, and that's, that's how it felt for me. And eventually through fitness, I started finding, especially in the bodybuilding space, that a lot of people are very similar to me. And so through that as well, made me more comfortable with talking about my journey and talking about, you know, like what I had to do and what happened in my relationship and how I came out of it. And now through coaching, um, I have now able to help people in their own journeys, or maybe they have a, a similar story to me and teaching them that, you know, it's, this is something that you can do for yourself and you have to take and maybe it's not fitness, maybe it's going and reading every day, but finding something that is for you that will build you up as a person um, is something I push a lot in coaching. And like I said, it may not be fitness. Some people um, don't get as invested as I do in terms of like bodybuilding. Um, but you can, in my opinion, coaching is more than just eat this and go do this cardio or workout program. It's so much more than that for me. And I think it's just because of my own experience and what I went through and what I was able to accomplish and leave because of um, fitness in general. So, um, yeah, I started, I lost, I ended up losing 65 pounds in two and a half months. And I was this big. <laughs> I had no muscle, nothing. I just lost a bunch of body fat and I had to learn a very different lesson. And that was how do I build muscle to look like those girls on stage? Cause I definitely don't right now. <laughs> so I was 110 pounds, which I'm five foot. So I'm already a little bitty in general, but, um, yeah, I hired my first coach at that point after I left the relationship. I got on a really good job and I proved to myself that this was something that I could stick with. In the past, I used to like pick up diets and drop them almost just as fast. Um, but I proved to myself that I can invest into this and um, I'm ready to take that next step. So I learned what it was like to eat and to train really hard um, as a competitor. And about a year and a half after that, I competed in my first bodybuilding show. And I was hooked from there. Um, I didn't care about placing. I didn't care about um, really like the, the Instagram post, nothing. I just had so much fun up there. And I won't forget, though I was so nervous, when I walked off stage, walking off, I remember thinking, I want to do this for the rest of my life. 
like this is for me and no matter what that journey looks like i just wanted to do this forever i love this feeling and so yeah um after that show um about a month and a half later uh, the team that i was on at the time asked me if i wanted to be a coach and i remember thinking like me what like what that's crazy and at the time i was just starting out and that was a huge deal for me because um that meant that i would've been mentored under an olympian coach and how many times can people say that you know and so i absolutely took that um opportunity and i hit the ground running um from there educating myself finding out more um making connections within the industry and my mission when i thought about what i wanted to accomplish as a coach it my mission statement i guess you could say is to be the person that i needed uh, when I first started. So whether that's when I first started and I was pre-diabetic or when I first started and I had no muscle and I needed to figure out what it was like to eat or no matter what that vision looked like, I needed guidance throughout those times and someone to point me in the right direction that cared for me in more ways than just putting me on stage, right? Um, because I know what bodybuilding can do for someone or a good coaching in general can do for someone and um, fitness. So yeah, that um, now I'm mentored under um, David Dimasquita, and it's a dream to be mentored under him because I have looked up to him for years now. And um, getting that now, I'm all definitely a lot invest more invested into functional health and stuff too. So I uh, have a huge grasp on like hormonal health, on um, gut health too, um, all those fun things. It's like uh, putting puzzle pieces together, I call it. But yeah, that's been essentially the the journey into getting to where I'm at right now. Are you a personal trainer who wants to scale and grow your business online? Have you been coaching online for years, yet don't know how to incorporate online into your current business model? Introducing Trainer Revenue Multiplier, the premier wealth creation system for fitness professionals that helps you earn more and work less. Visit www.trainerrevenuemultiplier.com today to schedule your free business accelerator session. If you're serious about taking your business to the next level, schedule your call today. The Weight Room Podcast is thrilled to announce our new sponsor, Prime Science. They're leaders in harnessing scientific research to revolutionize your fitness journey. With a firm foundation in the latest health sciences, Prime Science offers innovative products to help you achieve and surpass your fitness and health goals. These tools are more than just accessories. They're the result of rigorous scientific research aimed at optimizing your health. Dive deeper into how you can transform your approach to fitness at primescience.co.uk. Trust me, with Prime Science, you're in scientifically sound hands. There is always going to be bad apples, right, everywhere you go. Like, and I'm not going to say that everyone in the bodybuilding industry, for example, is like has that humility or, or even is good people. There's definitely going to be those, and there may be some of those that like that at the top. And but over time. I always say real recognizes real, but over time, I feel like these people also weed themselves out in ways, whether that is um, through connection or maybe like their fans meet them and they're like, oh, like, you're not what I thought you were online, right? And I think that's something that I've, just that meeting Angelica and the fact that she was able to say something that probably felt so small for her and completely changed the course of someone's life is insane to me that is insane and her and i um we connect now um i saw her at the arnold and we talked and stuff again so we we kept that connection you know and how crazy is that right um and so but that does so much for someone uh, and that's that's what is carrying me and i think that being it's very individual you know um being able to go back to your why right it's cheesy to say that everyone says that but going back to your why i think is extremely important and sometimes i feel like people forget that um and people forget the start and people forget um you know like they weren't always the most confident person and when it comes to fitness in general it can be viewed as very vain especially as bo bodybuilding we're getting up there and I'm putting on something that can fit in a little Ziploc bag um, and, you know, and I'm having to pose around, but it's, it's the why behind it that I also have to carry beh um, behind me and with me through my journey 
to impact others and me getting up on stage and telling my story isn't going to touch every single person, but it is for the people that I do this for. Right. And the, the people that like me when I first started out, um, and I, I think in my opinion, like with Angelica, she saved my life and I, that's what I want. Um, I wish there was more of that in every space, in every industry, but unfortunately, you know, that's not how things go, but the people that make their mark and the people that have that intention and that humility with what they do is, I think those people, it carries so much further in ways that other people who have the opposite intentions will never get. And though that's sad, I think it's true. And having that, you know, um, people see me in the gym or, um, people may, may have like recently met me looking at me, you would think that I may have been doing this for a long time. Um, or I've never had it hard in my life, but, um, you know, telling my story or being able to speak with someone, um, through Instagram DMS, or maybe they saw my transformation video on TikTok or something, um, or, um, maybe a podcast like this one and me being able to talk about, uh, what I went through can make them feel lonely. Even if it's just one person, like that's enough for me. And though, though I think that humility is definitely very, um, like an honorable thing. I think the people who are truly, um, truly set on that path won't view it as such. I, I almost view it as like a, well, yeah, of course, because, why wouldn't I? I'm so grateful for the things that I've been able to experience and I've gotten out of this and I just want to share it with others because this is great. And through the, I mean, my path hasn't been perfect. And that's another thing that I, I push with a lot of people, especially my clients is like, I don't expect perfect. I've never been perfect. You know, there's been times when I um didn't follow my meal plan for a weekend or, you know, but it's, it's the getting back up is proving it to yourself as well, too, that you're worth it. it. You can put yourself first walking into the gym and you talking about how like you don't feel the same um, if you're not on track and not like being in the gym as often. That's because you are you are taking away that that like where you're putting yourself forward, that thing where you're prioritizing yourself. And right now in our world, especially in the U S we're very work, 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 work. And we're constantly like giving, giving, give, 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 but not oftentimes, especially depending on your personality, we aren't pouring into ourselves enough, or maybe we don't have someone in our life that helps with that too. And so taking that step through the gym doors or taking that time to go and hit your workout or cardio, whatever, um, is that like pouring into your cup? And it isn't like an obligation. I remember when I first entered the gym, I used to almost view it as like a, a punishment too. Like, okay, like I'm overweight. I have to go work out. And that's before I actually started noticing a difference and actually, um, having fun with my workouts is when I used to talk to myself like that, that's when I used to pick up the diets and drop it just as fast too, is because I was making this, this negative thing. I felt like I was forced to do this. I had to do this. And when I, I gave myself this like mental image of like hugging myself and being like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry that I've treated you like this. I've, I've been your biggest bully when I needed to be your biggest supporter. And so giving myself that hug, talking to myself and, and understanding that being able to take initiative and get into the gym, make choices with your diet is also a privilege. And not everyone in this world can choose what they put on their plates. Um, not everyone in this world uh, can afford a gym membership or even has a gym by them. Um, and so that has also made me very thankful into being able to even do this in general. And when I started having that kind of verbiage with myself and being thankful for the opportunity to be able to take the time to do that and reap the benefits from it too. 
a lot changed for me. And so I think that's also tied into humility too, is being grateful for the fact that you can do this. Not everyone has a million subscribers on YouTube or, you know, and I'm not trying to down, you know, people's hard work to get to that point. But I think that the people who will truly appreciate it will take that and use it to make a difference within people. And I'll be real with you and say that I do attract a lot of people that have stories like mine. And because of me being able to share my story, which is absolutely what I want. Um, that's amazing to me. And being able to like see people grow through that. It's um, I have a client right now. She is I joke with her all the time about how she's like my twin. It's like I'm watching my own journey through her. Um, it's like copy and paste, really crazy. But seeing one, I'm giving my intentions with her as a coach is to give her the things that I needed that I didn't get through that process, um, through coaching and like being there for her, being a friend too, you know, um, cause it's more for me than that, um, just being a coach. And so that is so fulfilling to me. I told her when she actually makes it to stage for her, you know, this year, um, I'm going to sob, not just because I know she's going to do amazing. She looks incredible, but because of I knew what it took to get there, but I've also went through that too. And being able to, I'm getting goosebumps like thinking about it right now, but like that is the why I coach. That is why. And so, you know, when she came to me, it was, it wasn't, I have, um, you know, I'm, I'm a pro and I'm super, super impressive. It was like, Hey, your story and who you are as a person inspires me and we connect on this level and I'm starting out and I need help. And I'm like, absolutely. So that, that is huge um, in general for um, uh, people like us. Like we want to reach anyone and everyone. And it's not just, oh, we hope that we get the most views on a podcast. It's like, oh, I hope we we reach the right people that have the the most impact with through this right and so i think that that's where we connect very well and why um you know the people that you have are like-minded i remember after the first bodybuilding show i went to i created my first uh fitness instagram which is now my main page the white room podcast is proud to be partnered with prom science our new sponsor and a trailblazer in health technology Prom Science is dedicated to pushing the boundaries of what's possible in health and fitness through extensive research and scientific validation. Their products are a testament to their commitment to safe, scientifically backed health optimization. To learn more about how Prom Science is redefining fitness with valid science, visit promscience.co.uk. Join us in embracing a future where fitness meets rigorous scientific practice with Prom Science. This podcast is sponsored by Smoking Gun Coffee, a veteran owned coffee company. That strives to give back to those in need. Don't forget to use code TWR10 for a 10% discount at checkout. Um, that page has grown. You can scroll through and watch different phases of my life and also different hair colors. <laughs> but uh, you can see different phases of me. And those phases are, you know, um, watching my first initial like weight loss. I didn't post as much as I did at the time because I was definitely not like very confident, but you can see a bit of that. You can see my growth. And, and then after my first show, you can watch me nosedive into the worst rebound ever. And you can see me gain 40 pounds in my off season. That was not intentional. And you can watch me, um, lose it all into my prep and come back with a better physique. And that was also like huge. Um, and, you can see that like ebb and flow with me and, and bodybuilding in my journey and being transparent on that front that like some of your top, maybe top even Olympians, absolutely all of them have had that moment of oof, <laughs> of like, I fell on my face and um, I don't, you know, now I'm like, uh, scared to post about this. And yes, of course, like there's a pressure to be perfect social media in general, no matter if you're even bodybuilding or not. Um, if you're in the fashion industry, there's a, there's a quota with that. There's, there's this, always this standard that we always feel like we have to meet like, oh, I can't every time you get on, uh, like, um, 
any kind of social media page, you're like scrolling through videos. It's always, we have to buy the, the coolest thing we have to, Oh, look at this, um, workout because I'm definitely working out every single day or check out my shredded abs. And it's always just positive, positive, like dopamine hits, boom, 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 boom. But there's never that moment of like, Hey guys, I just binged a, uh, seven cupcakes. And now I've gained tw- uh, 40 pounds uh, in the coming months after that moment. And now watch me pick myself back up. There's never that. It's never that. It's always, okay, let's lose the weight in quiet. And then whenever we start feeling more confident, then let's start showing it. So that's an example there. But um, I think that more transparency is a gold. Um, I think that that is where the most impact comes in. And I've gotten more messages about... Um, posts of transparency than I ever have a stage shot of me looking optimal, right. In bodybuilding terms. And so I, I, that's where the connection is. And so I have no problem sharing those things and, or sharing that if, if I have a client that is in that horrible time of like, Oh, I'm just not feeling motivated. I'm feeling so down on myself. And they're just like beating themselves up about it. And I'm like, I don't care you haven't worked out in a week. I care that you get up and that's it. And so it's showing my own journey and showing how I have gotten up too in moments and being honest about the moments when I don't feel like getting up. It's a, that is where impact comes in. And that's what I think the people who are also like humble, like we backtracking a little bit, that's what we care about the most is impacting, not just showing face, but impacting So whether that's um, through fitness and showing that it's okay to have a bad rebound um, coming out of a show, or if that's um, showing I don't do my hair every single day, I don't know. As minor as it seems, something like that can do a lot for someone. And the very first person I followed when I created my page was Angelica. And I was on her page every single day. What is she eating? What is she doing? Let me make sure I watch her stories so I can mimic her day. Like, you know, um, because she's who I want to look like. And I'm sure there may be, it's kind of crazy to think about, but there may be someone that like looks at me like that. And it's like, okay, what, what am I posting right now that can impact that person? Um, Or or maybe like I can start that with someone or someone's feeling lost and i post a recipe, um, on my story or whatever. And they're like, Oh, I'm going to, I want that. That's an impact there though. Minor, um, that's an impact there. And that keeps them like, Oh, thank you for that. I've been really struggling with my meal plan. Like, Oh, I'm glad I could do that for you. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it, all that to say that impact is, is huge. And what we display on there doesn't have to be perfect because perfect doesn't have to, or perfect is, not as impactful as imperfect. Like, what do we do? What's the next thing? And how do we transfer all of this power that we as individuals now kind of have and push that into, you know, positive directions? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that this goes into what is easier on the mind these days for people. It is so much easier to scroll through people's videos of like, my top 10 favorites on Amazon and we can not use our brain much and we can watch her top 10 on Amazon for 12 videos in a row before we know it. It's been an hour of watching that. And that is just like mindless, so easy. And that's as unfortunately like where we are at right now, but it is, Oh my gosh, so much harder to watch the video on something that you don't want to address within yourself. Maybe it's an insecure part, or maybe it's, um, it's so heavy on you that it's so much easier for you to put down in a way and just avoid it, like procrastinate it. And that's how it was with my, that relationship I was telling you about, um, through conversation, for example, people would be like, Hey, are you like, how are you? And I'm like, Oh, I'm good. And then try and change the subject. Same thing. Like, um, okay. Following a creator that is bringing to light some things, but also showing how they're like owning it and getting through it. That's definitely more difficult and 
also way more consuming and harder working on the brain to watch. And so people are getting caught up in the, like the instant gratifications and fitness, for example, is never that never everything takes time, whether it's growing muscle, losing weight, whatever, that all that takes time. The, and that's why people say, enjoy, trust the process, enjoy the process. And that's because those things take time and there isn't that instant gratification, but there may be an instant gratification if you're shredded and you can post a posing 50 posing videos of you to some music or whatever, but there, there is no thought behind that. And that's where I think we're missing right now in the world is that is actually like being more intellectual and working through the hard things as well too, and growing that aspect, not saying it's non-existent, but it is definitely not as common right now. The people that make the most and actually impact with what they do with their social media and their followers is going to build something greater. I can use like Chris Bumstead, for example. He is not through his like bodybuilding career. He wasn't that person that put up a um, little like minute video of like, oh, top 10 gyms things on Amazon. Like, no, he he started doing the hard things. He wasn't always the best bodybuilder. Um, he wasn't the best classic guy for a while. And he had to work up to that. And he, his name was near, not nearly as big as it is now. Right. But he did the hard work and, but he was also transparent through that. And a lot of people connect with him so much because of his transparency. And he's like, I call him the Arnold, the modern day Arnold, um, because he has that impact and he will carry that for a long time, but it's through his transparency and you can see his hard work that he puts in and that's what makes him human. And that's where people crave is connection and that humanity. And now he is extremely successful. He has branched off to other avenues that's going to carry him farther beyond than just how many views he can get on Instagram, right? He's taking that and made an impact with it. And now it's just growing it itself, which is amazing from a business standpoint, but also in terms of he's just going to continue to reach more people and grow and more and more people are going to be inspired by him. I think bodybuilding now is almost a trend. It's very trendy now to, to post the cool posing videos and stuff and like go to the gym. Now gyms are more packed with younger people than I think I've ever seen. Um, though I haven't been bodybuilding very long, um, right now is definitely a lot higher of younger people, um, because of social media is up to, uh, coming into the space and more recording for sure than when I first started working out, but, uh, it's not a bad thing. It's just going to be really interesting to see those people that do last than, you know, 10 years and 20 years and then 40 and 50 years, like what the, the space looks like because of these current people. Yeah. Yeah. It is amazing. Um, I was at the Pittsburgh pro a few weeks ago and Chris was there. Um, and he got asked to go up and speak and it was like the whole room went silent and it was that looking back now is so cool because people, people didn't want to see him pose. People wanted to hear him talk and hear what he had to say. And that is truly amazing. So it's, it's very cool that we have people like that continuing, you know, history repeats itself. So I think that we're going to continue to have like these pinnacles in bodybuilding and that's going to be right now it's Chris Bumstead and who knows later in the years who that's going to be, but the potential of it being up in the air, like it can be anyone. And so it's, who's going to take that initiative? Who's going to make the most of their impact and reach the most people and be relatable. And I think that people glorify people in those positions and they're like, wow, like he has everything. Wow. But he worked hard for it, but also he had the best intentions with it too. And that can be anyone that can be anyone. And so I think that that's, I wish more people grasped that mentality and like, oh, that could be me and put themselves in that position and started like, okay, I'm going to be that person. Thank you for coming on and, and kind of shedding some light on that and, and bringing us your story tonight. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for creating a platform for people to do that. If you want to, before we head out, if you want to share any, any socials or any way that people can connect with you, connect with you, you can go ahead and do that. Yeah. Yeah. My Instagram is at Charmaine the Great. 
And same thing for TikTok, but TikTok has an underscore at the end of it. So Charmaine the Great um, underscore. And that's about it. If you're tired of searching for a coach or trainer, somebody who knows what they're talking about and has experience, make sure you go check out the new Coach's Corner on weightroompodcast.com. You can find quality, qualified coaches to help you achieve your goals, whether that's in bodybuilding or just general fitness. Stop wasting time and start achieving your goals today. The link to the Coach's Corner is down in the description below.